Good evening, guys. Uh, this is Terry, and uh, welcome to our webinar for tonight. Um, thank you guys for dropping by early, and uh, I hope that I got uh, good ideas to share with you guys today. But uh, based on what I've done just one hour earlier, I was having a webinar with my clients from China. You know, like there isn't much things to be excited about today because there isn't much setups that's completing. So I hope that uh, you know uh, you guys could be the one that to share with me like uh, what are good some good ideas to be trading on right now. Yeah. Uh, also, I have uh, Scott Carney in the room today. So uh, later on, I'm not sure if he's back yet, uh, but he might be doing some sharing with you guys to tell you guys about some of the new uh, you know like advances in the harmonic trading uh, family and uh, some things that some updates about some new platforms, indicators, and uh, some of the things that he's been developing. Yeah. So later on, I might I will be passing the mic to uh, Scott Yeah, in about 9.30. Yeah. So I will start off first, and uh, later on, I will pass it to him. Hopefully, you guys will learn something useful from him today. Yeah. Okay. Scott, later on, I will pass it to you at about 9.30, 9.35. Yep. Okay. Without further ado, uh, let's get started. And uh, okay, uh, I'm not sure if you guys followed my trading view, uh, but last week, uh, what I have been doing is uh, I'm predicting the, the turn in uh, a lot of yen pairs. So uh, Aussie yen, I was waiting to short. It did not materialize. Uh, Frank yen, I went in. I was stopped out with a small loss. Euro yen, uh, it went up to the first profit target on the small time frame. And uh, okay, just let me go through the charts. Okay, Aussie yen. Uh, this was a setup that I was waiting to short, but uh, it did not materialize, and uh, so no trade on Aussie yen. Second setup was on a uh, Frank yen. Uh, what happened was that uh, it went up and uh, just crashed down. It based on the small small pattern, which is the this sharp pattern. It actually went up and hit the profit target uh, one. Yeah, so actually it went up twice before just dropping. Yeah, so my takeaway is that uh, okay, in natural fact, uh, for euro yen and uh, frank yen, euro yen I took some partial profit, but frank yen I let I see all my profit become losses. Yeah, so my takeaway is that uh, always uh, respect the trend. In the event of both yen pairs, mostly of the yen setups, uh, the trend is still pretty pretty bearish, and uh. If you are buying on a bullish pattern on a bearish trend, be sure to take some profits off the table when it hits your profit target one. Yeah. So in the event that you don't know how to take profit for the shark pattern, uh, what I do have for you guys is a ebook where you can download. Uh, I sent it out last week. Uh, I will just paste it for some of you guys who have not downloaded. Okay. So uh, I have the ebook. Uh, the ebook will tell you guys how to set the stop loss for the shark pattern. How to set the profit target, and uh, there are many you know PRZs in the shark pattern. How to execute correctly? Yep. All this teaching is based on what I've learned from Scott. So I hope that this eight-page ebook uh, has been useful for you guys. Yeah. So just give. Let me give you guys the link. Yep. So if you go to this link here, you can actually download my eight-page ebook where I document. Uh, how to take profit, how to take a uh, stop loss for the shop pattern. So far, as I have about 400 downloads, and uh, most of you guys, uh, I think y'all give me good comments, good feedback on it. Yeah, I hope to be writing more ebooks like this to share whatever I learned from Scott with you guys. Yep. Okay. So this was Frank Yen hit the profit target one, but I did not take profit, and it became a loss. Euro Yen, I was a little bit more lucky, but uh, it was like a 30 pips profit only. It's a very short term trade. Yeah. So I actually documented this here. Blue line was the first profit target. Second, green line was the these two lines were the profit target. Hit the first line and just drop off. Yeah. In natural fact, uh, I realized that this profit target one, this level is actually the 5 0 pattern. So today uh, I really run through most of the market. I realized there isn't much setups except uh, Kiwi dollar, which is very close to our PRZ. <clears throat> So no matter what, I still want to go through most of the setups with you guys and, and share with you guys my opinion. Okay, uh, first up is on a Kiwi dollar. 
So what I do have on Kiwi Dollar is a bullish uh, bad pattern. I've been waiting for about two weeks. Haha, <laughs> Marzak, uh, it was a pity I could not hold on to the, the target profit. Yeah, so uh, sometimes it's really overthinking, overanalyzing, but you know, some of this setup is really, really good. And uh, just one good setup is already 600, 700 pips and uh, it could have covered, you know, you have enough to spend for the whole three months, I guess. Yeah, but you know, I, I did not hold on to the profit target and uh, I just want to demonstrate the effectiveness of this pattern. The problem with all this, of we, you know, trading this pattern and not making money is really our emotional control and our trade management. I have to say, you know, these patterns, when I look back, I, I back test, I forward test, always is really very effective and very useful. Just that uh, we do not have the right execution strategies to really, you know, hit the... Okay, um, Razak, a little now I will talk about Power Aussie, but let me talk about Kiwi Dollar first. Okay. So, uh, Kiwi Dollar, this is really interesting. 69.13 is where the PRZ will complete. Yep. Okay. So, uh, later on, this is how you're going to execute. The price must touch 69.13. That's the first criteria. Once it touches, I hope that you know uh, it will get supported at this PRZ. I hope that it shows some kind of a pin bar reversal at this zone. That's how I'm going to execute my trade. Uh, uh, in the, an indicator I always use is the RSI. So I'll put in the RSI. Default setting, no additional. Okay, I have to delete this first before I can put in the RSI. Okay. Okay. So what I want to see is that uh, I, ho I hope the RSI hits oversold. Then uh, when the candlestick start to starts to turn with a bullish pin bar or bullish uh, bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, you know I want to see the RSI, you know, uh, get out of the reversal, the oversold zone. These are good signals. If you guys are on formation seeker, look at the HSI indicator. Both should come out of the, uh, the oversold zone and that should be a good trigger to go long. Yeah. But right now, uh, it has yet to complete the PRZ. Yesterday, you see, some of you guys might have jumped in, but I'm still patient. I want the full, full zone of the PRZ to be tested. Once it's tested, then you know that the light bulb turns on and you know now is the time to look for buy signals. Yeah. In the event that the PRZ, you know, uh, the price is not supported by the PRZ, price continue drifting down, then you know that the market is not respecting this PRZ and Kiwi dollar is going to go a lot lower. Yeah. So I'm prepared for both scenarios, but I'm more interested to go long based on this bad pattern on the 4-hour chart. Yeah. So the profit target and the stop loss is all documented on my trading view. Please do take a look. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are interesting setups to look at is also Euro dollar and dollar Swiss. So what I'm seeing on this uh, chart is that, uh, you know, uh, okay, just let me show you guys. Okay, uh, on the H4 chart, you can actually see that uh, price is respecting this channel. Every time it touches the high of the channel, you will start to float down. It touches the low, it will go up. Yeah. So this channel has been use has been effective since January this year. Yeah, it went up, I think just in late March, touches the high and it comes down again. So right now we are near the low of the, the channel right the, uh, again. But uh, what I don't like is the RSI BAM here. RSI BAM, you know, it means that uh, you know, when it's still W, W means that the trend is likely to continue going further down. Yeah, so uh, I hope really to see a final retest into this low here. I will expand my range a little bit. One more retest into this low, a very nice pin bar reversal. RSI finally touches the oversold and completes the RSI BAM. Yeah. RSI BAM means this, you know, you see a W, then the RSI gets out of the oversold zone. It touches the 50 level. So right now you hit the first two criteria. W, come out of the zone, hits the 50. Yeah. So next up, you hope that it comes down to the, R, the oversold again with a sharp retest and it gets out of the zone. Yeah, that's what we call the RSI BAM. This one, the RSI BAM usually signifies the end of a trend. Yeah. So I hope that that will happen later on and uh, that could be a trigger for us to go along. Right now, you're in the middle of nowhere. I hope that this zone here, this zone here is being 
retested nicely with RSI BAM. It shows a bullish, uh, bull, uh, I mean, a pin bar or engulfing bullish candlestick reversal at this zone here. And that's where I could be interested to go long on the euro dollar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so right now there's no pattern here, no shark, nothing, absolutely nothing. I've scanned through whatever I can scan. So no setups, you're just playing off, trading off a channel. If you look at the dollar, Swiss dollar, Swiss is usually the inverse of the euro dollar. It has exactly the almost the same setup, but it's inverse. Yep. So right now, uh, it's on this uh, down sloping channel. Yeah, and uh, what I can see is that uh, we are right at the high of the channel. Yeah. So we are, I'm, we are, I'm not sure whether this is a real breakout or not a real breakout. Uh, RSI, you know, uh, comes is now at the 50 level. Yeah, so I will be really interested to watch, you know, a retest of the highs again. I want to watch for a retest of this high. Hopefully, it forms a double top with some kind of a divergence on my RSI. You know, I want to see a, like a hammer, you know, bearish engulfing at this zone here, comes back into the zone and that's where I can short along, I mean, uh, follow the channel and do a short, yeah. But now it's really very tricky, you know, right now I think tomorrow, let me let me see what a news event that's coming up. Uh, today, 10 p.m., Canada has news. So later I'll be talking about the dollar cat. 10.30, you have some crude oil news. 11.15, that's a BOC press conference. So all this will affect the dollar cat, the Canadian uh, currency pair. Tomorrow we have Aussie news. Uh, this week seems like uh, dollar has news also. Pound has nothing much. Euro has nothing much. Yeah, so I'm expecting the. I don't think the crude oil inventories will affect the dollar a lot. Probably the cat is the one that's gonna really move a lot. So later I will talk about the cat. Yeah, BOC government speaking. Yeah, 4 a.m. Yeah, this part here, correct. So a lot of Canadian news this week. Expect anything related to the Canada dollar to really be volatile yeah but dollar wise nothing much yeah so <clears throat> it's really tricky i really hope you know to this week you know the, the dollar goes up retest starts to fall you know it breaks the support around here breaks the immediate support so i know that you know bear, the, the people that's coming down bear, the people are selling the dollar and any pullback into the range i will be shorting with the trend that's a lot more safer than trying to predict the turn right here. Anything happen. Yeah. I have an inquiry on an Aussie cat, which I will talk about later. So maybe this week I want to talk about is mainly a lot of Aussie pair. Uh, first one, the most interesting one is on dollar cat. Let's take a look at dollar cat first. Oh, my network is a little bit slow this week. So dollar, uh, what I can see on the dollar, if you... If you are following the bigger time frame like I do, you know I am I do swing trade most of the time. So, uh, uh, sorry, I need to mute you guys. Okay, I need to mute all of you guys. All right. Okay. So, dollars in uh, dollar cat is interesting. There will be a dollar Canadian news coming up tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm not sure which time zone are you guys from. I talk about those in Singapore. UTC plus eight. Yeah, so these are the critical levels that should, you should be watching on dollar cap. You know, uh, this is a potential bad pattern. If the news later on, you know, dollar cap just breaks below the low here, any pullback, this is the B to D RSI band breakout trade where you are trading the short towards the, the D. Yeah, this could be easily a 200 over pips move. Let's calculate the risk to reward to see whether it's worth it. If you're shorting anywhere close to this level here, stop loss should always go above the C point. So C point is at 3450, I will give a buffer of about 20 pips. 3470 should be my stop. Around there. Yep. Profit target. 886 of this move here. Yep. So in terms of risk to reward, uh, I'm talking about one is to one risk to reward here. Yeah. Uh, so really, uh, have to wait, watch the news. I hope that dollar cat really breaks below the B point. Any pullback, I will at least short this.
but I will use a big stop risk to reward. So if I risk 100 bucks on this, I will make about 100 bucks. Yeah. I will not try to be stingy on my stop loss, you know, because I know that uh, it could really do a big retest, test my patience, go all the way until C before turning down again. But I really hope that once you retest the B point, it just comes down nicely. Yeah. So this dollar cat. Uh, I have a request on Aussie cat. Let's see whether it looks the same. <clears throat> okay, so this is pretty interesting also. Aussie cat. Okay, so for Aussie cat, uh, what I do see is a potential shark pattern. One four one four. That's pretty good. Okay, so this is what could happen. One six one. Oh, it's really close. Yeah. Well, I'll take the low from here. So it's right here. Okay. So if you are wondering how I draw this uh, shark pattern, you could download my ebook. Uh, I document all the steps in the ebook just for you guys over the last weekend. Yeah. So dollar is likely. Okay, dollar cat looks like it's coming now. Aussie cat has some room to, to come down to before uh, people will be buying on the shark pattern right here. Yeah, so it's here. So really, uh, I expect the Canadian to strengthen and uh, it could really happen tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, so there are a few scenarios. It could be tonight's news, it pushes the cat now. I mean, it's, the cat goes stronger, Aussie cat comes down, but at 4 a.m., maybe they see something else, you know, and those, you guys can consider buying the Aussie cat when it reaches the PRZ. Yeah, so this pattern will complete around 98.50, and this is the risk to reward on this setup. Okay, uh, first profit target is always the C to the D leg, the 50%. So I have my profit target right here, 1.0094. Okay. If my entry is at here, the my stop loss will be at the 113 level plus a buffer. It's about 20 pips. So it's 90. I'll put it at 70. Okay. So in terms of risk to reward, if you buy this shark pattern on Aussie Cat H4 chart, uh, this could be a 1 is to 3 risk to reward, uh, risking about 110 pips to make 241 pips. Am I right? No, no. Risking 79 pips to make 240 pips. Yeah. So this setup you could definitely consider. It could happen. Anytime later on, yeah. Okay, uh, what other requests do you guys have? Let me check. All right, is there any questions that you guys have? So what other Canada pair? Probably Canada Swiss. So Canada, if it's coming down, Cat Swiss should be looking bullish. Uh, let me take a look, I'm not sure. Yeah. There should be some pattern to short on top. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what I see on the cat Swiss, uh, I don't see much stuff. Uh, probably only an ABCD pattern that could complete. Yeah. So it will complete a little bit higher. Yeah. So if you're talking about cat Swiss, it could go up to around 76, 40. And uh, at this level, you know, previously there was a resistant turn support. Yeah. So this zone here, this could be a good zone for us to consider. But right now, I think cat Swiss is going higher. Yep. Okay. What other Canada pair? Pound cat. If cat is going stronger, pound cat should be coming down. Not sure. Let's take a look. Okay. Yep. 
so uh, I see a potential pattern forming. Uh, this pattern is uh, 574. It could be a bat, it could be a shark. Yeah. Okay. This is like a godly pattern. You should, you must complete a ABCD move. Yeah. So at this level here. Okay. This is like a godly. Let me let me measure it properly. Okay. So it's very close to 618, it's further away from the 5, it's closer to 618. So I'll classify this as a Gartley. Yeah. So uh, take note, when this pattern completes, you could be going long around 6420, right at this level here. Yeah. So watch this. Uh, right now, I think pound cat is coming down. So everything looks pretty correlated. Yeah, the Gartley. <laughs> Scott, you're here. Yeah, so uh, this on a pound cat, 4-hour chart, and... Uh, do watch out after the news happens, you know. So the news tonight could push Pound Cat down, but the news in about six to seven hours time, four a.m. Singapore time, there could be a reversal happening right here. Yeah. Let me cover one last Canada pair before I pass uh, the mic over to to Scott Carney, where he will share with you guys what his view about the market. So last one I'll talk about probably is uh, Eurocat. <clears throat> So this is interesting. Uh, let me see if this can fulfill. Okay, this does not fulfill the shock pattern. So this could be a Gartley again. I'm not sure. It could be a bad five. So this is likely a bad pattern, and uh, you should be waiting to long the Euro cap when it comes down to the 1.3876 level. So a, a big move down from here, and uh. You know, this is the B point. The, it, it did a breakout of the B point. It did a nice retest. So when I talk about strategies about a breakout of the B, shorting the retest, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Kill sell or just be, you know, I, today I invited Scott over. So I'll be passing him the mic in about five minutes time. Yeah. So this is a strategy that is documented in uh, Harmonic Trading Volume 2, where, you know, you could be trading the breakout of the B point trade from B to D, but don't go for the breakout, wait for, always wait for a pullback into the B, where you'll be shorting right here. So everything that I'm sharing with you guys, uh, stuff that I learned from Scott's book, are stuff that I, you know, that you guys can access by reading his book, attending his webinar, you know. So there's nothing special that I'm inventing, you know, there's no special pattern that I've invented here. So all the credits go to Scott and uh, I hope that uh, later on you guys will be impressed by whatever updates that he's going to share with you guys. Yeah. So Eurocat, uh, I'm going to summarize it. Later on, I, I expect Eurocat to weaken. And uh, if it comes down to 3870, this is the zone where I'll be watching for reasons to buy on a bullish bet pattern. Yeah. So, uh, yep. so everything is pointing to the direction that Cat is going to strengthen later on. And uh, okay, so let's let me pass over the the host to I mean uh, let Scott, Scott Carney take over and uh, hopefully you guys can learn a lot from him. I'll be here too, so I'll talk to you guys later on. Uh, let me pass on to Scott. Okay, Scott, on you now. Thanks, Terry. Um. Hey Terry, let's go back to your screen actually. Okay. Because uh, I think the perform I'm running the other software, and I think let's just start with uh, work off a of trading view. Um, let me get you back here. Okay. I'll put you on the mic. Yeah. Just tell me where to scroll. I'm gonna give this back to you. Are you logged in? You're logged in. There you go. Yep. Sorry about that. Let me give you back. Let's work off a of trading view and. Um, I do have something that I'm in development on, an auto harmonic pattern finder for TradingView. 
Uh, I know it's a super uh, popular site, um, and those guys have been really great. So uh, it's, you know, I, I, I think really, uh, I've been working with Terry for probably the last two years. We've gotten together, uh, especially last year is when we really started. And, um, you know, Terry, I, I think, is the standout in the industry. Um, there's a lot of, I, I say, you know, uh, misinformation about the patterns, uh, their effectiveness, and really how to apply them. Um, and so I think somebody like Terry is going to give you the most realistic um, insights. I've spent a lot of time with Terry showing him some of the finer points that I know. Uh, we actually spent a week last year in Poland and had some great times with the guys from Harmonic Forex as well, Boone and Sniath. So it's, you know, it's been a great experience to reach out and meet everybody. Uh, and I, I appreciate everybody showing up. Um, you know, really, for me, the harmonic patterns are about being as precise as possible and measuring the market like Terry's showing you. So let's just go through. I say, you know, I, th I think you went through a couple of these. Um, there's a lot of really good charts that you show. Let's, let's, uh, Let's just stay on point here and take a look at uh, what you're lining up. Um, for a long time, I've been bearish on the U.S. dollar and still am. So I think that there's a lot of those pairs to be looking at with that kind of a bias. Uh, let's pull up, uh, I think, for one, actually two, really, are Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar. Those are some, those are, uh, I think, some ripe pairs there. Yeah, there you go. And the other thing that I wanted to really stress to everybody is to be aware of the longer term levels. Okay, okay here you go. Really beautiful. Um, really nice. Right here, right in the PRZ here, 886. That's a bat pattern, folks. And this is... Um, uh, exactly the kind of situation we want to be looking for. Let's bring up uh, let's bring up RSI as well. Let's get let's get inside that, that and really take a look because RSI is a standard measure developed by Wells Wilder in his 1978 book, uh, New uh, New Trading Systems, Technical Trading Systems, and uh, he released a number of very popular oscillators. So in all of my work with patterns and measurements. Uh, what happened is that I, I realized that there has to be some kind of environmental bias where the market, we can look at price movements and we can say, yeah, price has moved pretty far relative to maybe another segment, but what we really need is a measure, something that gives us uh, kind of the extremes, uh, a relative kind of dynamic extreme. So relative strength is one of those measures. And we've developed some other indicators. Uh, we developed some proprietary stuff, harmonic strength index. Um, we find that, that there's some tools that really help, especially when we're making probably the most difficult decision, which, which is this right here, right in the PRZ. So you're looking at a Kiwi dollar, four hour bullish bat. And I know for a fact, uh, Terry, if we can pop up the daily, you're going to find an even more interesting situation going on here where on the daily as well, we're at some big numbers. And this is uh, a common, uh, real common occurrence here. And um, so let's, let's look at the, the preceding bat. Because uh, everything that, that we've been, no, 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 go back. There's, there's the smaller bat. Yeah, let's trace out that larger bat. Okay, and if you guys, especially those that are new, if you're new to harmonic patterns, let me tell you the qu quickest way that, and Terry was demonstrating it, that you can differentiate these M and W structures. The first thing I always look at is for the B point. So if your B point is not at a 618 or very close, and we are, we're talking usually for plus minus 3%, then it's usually going to be a bat pattern. If it's less than 618, if, let's say if it's less than 58%, okay, then you know it's going to be a bat pattern with a deeper retracement. That's, that's what we've got right here. So, And the other thing about this is that uh, one of the things that I've done a lot of the work on 
um, in the volume two book and then the volume three that I just released is to really understand, okay, the difference between, there's a huge difference between the first time a pattern completes and a second time a pattern completes. In this situation on the daily, that type one, okay, that goes to a 382. Terry, can you do a 382 retracement from A to D right off the top? Be um, because our, right off the top, yeah, because this is how we look at our basic expectation of, okay, we have a pattern, but where can it go? What's the potential here? And the potential is something that I outlined actually in the volume one book and I was noticing this and kind of created this framework of the target one at a 382 and the target two up at a 618 um, but the 382 that in that initial reactive move okay that's your first trade and that's something that you know really critical to understand that usually the first reaction off of a pattern uh, we're going to be playing it up to that 382 and that's the Nice, that blue line. Uh, right there at 70, 75. Okay, and, and the other point, it really critical, if you guys aren't aware of the terminal bar, okay, the terminal bar is the exact bar that hits all of the numbers. Um, so in our smaller pattern right here, we are, we're, we're right about there, aren't we? We're in the terminal bar. It, it just hit that 886, didn't it? About one people we one pip away. All right, then that means literally I'd be waiting until that 886 hits. Now, here's here's the real critical factor, and these are some of the finer points you're going to learn from Terry, some of the finer points that I stress for all harmonic patterns, is that we don't even consider an execution until that bar closes. Because how that bar closes is going to tell us a lot about the pattern. And that's, these are finer points that make all the difference in the world. So if we're one pip away, um, I really think that, you know, it's something you got to realize is, is that if I'm sitting there in the trade and I want to trade harmonic patterns, um, you got to understand that, okay, we're in the zone, but it's still not time yet to execute the trade. And I look at it as I, I frame all my trades out in over three stages identification, execution, and management. And we're looking right here at the bar where the identification phase of the trade is about to end. And we would consider and start looking for confirmation on the retest, the secondary test of the next bar. And usually within, I, I stress like a three to five bar window. Most harmonic reversals are going to give you like three to five bars. So if we're looking at this pattern, it's a retest of a rather significant daily structure. We have a smaller pattern on the retest. That actually is quite common. Actually, that's, that's a preferred scenario. And now we want to just look down here later today into tomorrow, hitting this support down here, probably somewhere around 69, maybe a little bit under. But right in this zone is where we'll be looking for that. And we play it off of the smaller pattern, but it establishes the proper expectations of, okay, when do we get in? Well, we don't even get in for another two and a half hours. So if that basic understanding alone, that we need that bar to complete, and then we look at the next bar, would tell us, okay, we're early. And these are simple techniques uh, uh, that I use. Uh, an another technique that I use is that I'll wait for this price bar to close, and it's a pretty steady grind down off of that 382, um, off of that blue line. So now we're in the retest. So I know I'm early in this trade. I might look in the next four to eight hours for even an individual bullish bar, because we know if this, this pattern holds, it stabilizes, okay, we've got a, a sizable distance to our minimum profit targets. That 382, 618 targets, those are those two profit targets are uh, our minimum expectations, but at least establish the trade parameters. And that's, um, I, I, I got to stress to everybody, you, I think, you know, doing the harmonic patterns, the, how I developed the harmonic patterns was my own personal frustration. 
of wanting to be exact as possible to understand what's going on. And, you know, harmonic patterns didn't exist 20 years ago. There was a lot of zigzag stuff. There was a lot of Elliott Wave stuff. This whole thing that you're seeing has only been created in the last two decades. And it's uh, the patterns, um, uh, all the M and W patterns, let's just say that, and the shark and the the the, uh, the five O. those are all my creations. All the other patterns that are people are out there, anti-patterns and whatever, I have nothing to do with them. Uh, and that cipher pattern, I don't have anything to do with them. And let me tell you why I, I contacted Terry. Because I checked into this cipher when it started to emerge about two or three years ago, and it didn't even look like anything. And then I found Terry because Terry was teaching everybody the way to sell the breakdown, which was the exact right intu intuitive read on it. So that, you know, those kind of things, I think when you understand the relationships of how this stuff works, you got to understand we're utilizing specific ratios because they're related to nature. So if you start changing ratios, okay, you're going to get you're going to get results that are not harmonic. And that's why the numbers, the ratios are critical, the relationships and then the ABCD structures. These are what make patterns harmonic. Now, oh, we just stepped into that next uh what are you you're in a 4 hour. Oh, I see what okay. I got that. You're, I, I see what happened there. So yeah. So now you're into that next bar here. And did that? Did that red bar hit it, or did that oh, fall one one pip shy? Exactly literally? it was one pip away. Yeah. All right. So we're still waiting, and that's not incredibly. That's not the terminal bar. Scott, can you explain so, to? And you, uh, this, uh, yeah, sorry, I think a lot of people have this question about execution at the PRZ. What are the exact few things that you will look at before you actually enter a long or a short. You know, sometimes the if the price actually closes slightly below the PRZ, it comes back up. Uh, is it still, are, are, you, are you still going to execute the trade? It, yeah. No, it's got to hit all of the numbers. I mean, it closes and slightly below and it comes back up again. So I think this is a question that a lot of people have on their mind. Yeah. Uh, I think, the, again, the standard uh, the standard way that I look at this, okay, is that on the first first time it's hit, um, you can get some consolidation. The key is to coordinate what that initial bar, and when I say terminal bar, okay, this is a good example because we have a bar. See, look at the bar about, I don't know, 10 or 12 bars ago okay. where we, we hit that zone yep. partially, yeah, on that green bar at 10. Okay, that's, I think that's right there is a great situation for harmonic traders to consider because that's going to be, I think a lot of people will get uh, lulled into a false sense of security and they'll say, okay, it hit one of the numbers, so now it's going up, I'm just going to jump it. In. And that is not what I do. Uh, I'm very strict on the rules. I will pass on opportunities if I don't get the conditions precise conditions that I'm looking for. And those conditions are a complete test. So we, we're looking at this zone here. We don't have the complete test yet. And I'm, I'm st I would still be waiting on this until all the numbers are tested. And the other expectation is that most of the times in valid reversals, we are going to exceed that zone nominally. And so whatever that price bar does when it hits the zone, is going to give you a great deal indication of uh, what I like to say is overspill, a little excessive move beyond the zone because we're focused on that zone, all right? But it's really at the, the edge of the zone, right at the bottom of the zone where we want to focus our, you know, uh, where the, the larger optimal ex execution will occur. And so that might be as low as, say, 69 69.10 area, clearly the bottom, the 886 is at 69.13. So that gives me a number, and I, I like to do that a lot, where I'll look at the PRZ, and in this case, we're 69 and a quarter to 69.13. In my brain, I'm thinking, okay, there's my general range, but in my brain, I'm thinking 69.13. That's our minimum number. I want to see what happens when we get to 69.13. 
You still with us? I think there was an issue there. Terry, let me know if you're still with us. Yep, yep, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and so right now, okay, we're looking at this, and I think a lot of people, they might be getting antsy because they're thinking, all right, we're in the zone. We got a trade here. Finally, we've been waiting, especially we've been waiting on this thing to come back. So you could be waiting for days on it. Yeah. And I, th I find that that's something that uh, a lot of harmonic traders look at is where they will be able to trace out the patterns like you did and showed potential patterns. And then they get down to the zone and they've been waiting so long that they're overstimulated. Maybe too much coffee, maybe whatever, but they're too anxious. And I like to use the expression of that you trade the market, okay? You're ready to, you trade the market when it's ready to be traded, but not when you're ready to trade and there's a big difference a lot of people will get excited and learn and spend time studying and and dedicate themselves but then they don't let the situations they need or the situations that are in their trading plan fully develop and that's what we're looking at right here is a situation where we're waiting for this to test on that next on in this interval here down there at that zone. Now we're looking at this this price bar. If this trades uh, a little bit under the PRZ, it's still going to be valid. But I'm again, I'm not going to enter the trade until that's fully complete, and I look for confirmation literally on the next interval. So you're still here in you know, what I call identification phase. Uh, we're about to jump into the execution phase, but also think we're on a four-hour chart. So if this takes, I, I think, a general three to five, sometimes three to five individual price bars, no matter what the time frame, no matter what, that would give you anywhere from 16 hours, uh, 12 to 16 hours, 20 hours maybe, to make the overall assessment. Now, I'm, I, as I started out, I really am a big believer that the daily structures um, and daily patterns, especially the currencies, cannot be ignored no matter what your time frame is. And I think this is a great example of it where we're coming back against, we got two patterns here. This is the smaller of the two. So I, I think, um, you know, I'd be looking for what's the confirmation? What's, if we hit all the numbers on this bar, what am I looking for? I'm looking for an RSI rejection of the oversold. So we come down to 30 and we know we're early, we're very close, but we're not quite there yet. So I'd be looking for that thing to, to register a 30 reading, hit that 69.10 area, and then, then I would take a hard, hard look at what happens in the next four hour interval for that that those signs of change. Um, you look at this, even the last 24 hours, all right, this is straight down, it's, it dropped, uh, 70 pips, 60 pips, straight down in a, a straight fashion. So I'm not going to jump in front of that knife until I see some stabilization. But these are important differentiations. Uh, I think everyone, uh, if they can take, take the time and it, just watch how this follows through, uh, you're going to see, be able to gain insights where I'm not a fan of just putting in a limit order at a PRZ because I believe that 95% of all trades and successful harmonic pattern reversals are going to be executed at the end, at the extreme or just below the low level of the D point. So these are things that, that for me in my trading journey and you know I developed a lot of these ideas during the dot com bubble and you know it's about it was literally about 20 years ago uh, in 1997 where I was doing a lot of talking and introducing these concepts and um, and then the finer points kind of evolved and so that's really what I, I, I you know how I would frame that out yeah you want to pull that up there's a great RSI band and in dollar index there that we can look at because the other thing that Terry started out today and I and he's doing a really good job of and I think it's some 
something that I have not done a great job of. I mean, I've kind of coming out of retirement myself just about two years ago, three years ago. Um, a lot of the work I did in the volume two book and the volume three, the differentiation of indicators. Uh, we now have the harmonic strength index. I'm hoping to get this on trading view. Um, but a lot of the differentiation of these indicators uh, is enormous to the understanding of structure, the patterns, the harmonics. And, you know, we've got a situation here on the dollar currency. There's the four hour. Let's go to the weekly, though, my friend, because that's really the what's so dominating. This is, something with you. Uh, this is something that I traded last, uh, last month in March. So it's about identifying a good shark pattern. So what I did is that uh, on this setup, I think this is a good lesson to share with the, the rest or so. Initially, I actually draw a pattern that looks like this. You know, like this is the 86 somewhere around here. So this was like a shark mm -hmm. thing. And it's actually busted down before going up. But I, on hindsight, I realized if I've drawn it this way instead. Sorry. Because I think that your shark pattern, there's no definition for the B point. So if I've drawn like this instead, right, the, the periodic should be right here at the one. Well, wait a minute. Let's let's go back to the let's go back to the one what you drew there before. Previous, okay. You didn't reach an yeah, you didn't reach an eight eight six off of that swing. And everything that I say and, and I'll I did a, a lot of work on the volume three. But look mm -hmm. what happens, and this is actually another this is the exact reason why we cannot switch the numbers. I see people changing numbers eight, out eight, there, and it's driving me. What was the, that's 885, what was the exact low? And I mean, literally, the 886 and the shark, that's just a minimum number, okay? It's, it's, and again, the whole. Yeah, 886. That, that hit the 886, the exact low? It hit, it did a double test, so I went long, and Monday overnight, it kept down. Yeah, I redraw the shark pattern, I realized that, you know, this is another PRZ if you draw it off a different point A and point B. Yeah, so this point B, I'm just not sure, like, whether you'll be defining... No, no, wait, 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 wait. All right. Also, Terry, your, your, your minimum, this will help you out. Okay. Okay, your minimum, your minimum impulsive leg has to be a 1618. The shark is an extreme character. It's not an M&W structure. Okay, so the shark needs a 1618. Yeah, so if you're not sure, yeah. It, it completed a, a, a Okay, that's it. okay. Let me show it to you. It's here. So uh, if you draw it off the low here, 161 is right here, is it? It's perfect. Yeah, yeah but look, okay, now I see, I also see the issue. Yeah. All right, first of all, you need to grab a clean high or low. So is that secondary high, high lower than the first high? This is higher, this is lower. No, 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 on the tops. Okay. It's about the same. Is that, yeah, okay. Start with the extremes. First of all, start with the extremes. There's your extreme move, okay? But now, when you go and you want to you want to put in that other, that impulsive move, okay, where is the high off of that? You, you see where you're starting that point? Okay, you're starting it there. But the impulsive leg, let's 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 remove that secondary retracement. Secondary retracement. And this is important. Yeah, the the one you just put on there. The one you just put on there. This is important, guys, because I know uh, you know I I came out with the shark years ago, and I, my my uh, stressing the importance of eight eight six one six one eight. But I, I think this is really good to outline this. Yep. Uh, because dr drawing it is critical. So what you have there on that first impulsive move, Terry, from that low at about 1,200, all right, that look, look at where if you wanted to go off of the prior high, okay, that secondary high, all right, doesn't work. That doesn't work because you have a prior high. So the true yeah. impulsive divergence is off of there. Exactly. Okay. So you would draw your 1618 off of there. Okay. And that points you lower. Yeah. The the uh, uh, two other things that uh, there you go. Why don't you trace that out? Because I think that's that shows it really nice. And then I will. 
and that's a pure identification. I think 80% of all harmonic pattern mistakes are made because of improper identification. This is not an easy pattern. It's extremely effective, but we got to get the measurements right. Um, and what I, I recommend on that, okay, there's two things that I recommend everybody to be aware of. Okay, your impulsive leg, that's that extreme down. That has to be at minimum 1618. 886, that's another minimum, okay? And then finally, Terry, what I want you to do is I want you to walk me through, take a look at RSI as we get down there. Even, tell me about RSI. You entered, okay, you entered right off the 886 or after yeah. the 886. After it, it got okay. out of the zone. Yeah, so it's, it's already out of the okay. zone. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about the, tell me about the RSI structure though. Oh, this is uh, RSI BAM. Yeah. It's an RSI BAM, but that's a complex structure. That W structure goes to the fifty. Goes to the down. fifty. Yeah. And so, what's your expectation on that? It will come down for one more retest. When you got it. Yeah. For another retest, exactly. Hmm. So if you see that you're in there, okay, and we can execute trades with complex structures. Um, that's, you know, it's just that we we expect a retest. Okay. So if, if you're in there, my friend, and you get you hit the 50 and you get no price progress, okay, also look, that's, that's, that puppy goes sideways yep. for what? 12, 15, 18 bars, 20 bars? I mean, okay. if you get something that stalls and you get, you get progress in your indicator but you get no price progress, um, you know, then – you you scratch it out, but what happens in this situation is you do get the per the perfect secondary test to complete that RSI divergence. Okay. So and, this will be the bar, that, that, which is the exact bar that you will enter. This is the PRZ. This bar, this is the final retest of the RSI oversold. So mm -hmm. you get it out of the zone. Is it this bar here? But it's still below the PRZ. So this part here sometimes is still a little bit subjective. Yeah, I may probably need to explain. Yeah. And let not well, well. Why don't you show? Okay, the zone we've we've lined up the zone. That proper zone in that situation is ninety nine twenty ninety nine thirty. Yep. That's your terminal bar. Okay, put, put the this, that's uh, terminal bar. Breakdown of the PRZ. Do you consider this? That's great. That's what we want. We this is the edge. That's that harmonic edge. Okay, because this is the beauty of of the methodology. Okay, we can identify the patterns, and we get that overspill. I mean, listen, an exact reversal off of a PRZ is a fallacy. The 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 ideal reversal is exactly like this, okay. where you have terminal bar, the terminal bar completes, but we don't even consider the execution until the next bar. Like I was talking about on the other on the other uh, pattern for I think it was Aussie dollar or is Kiwi yeah. dollar. So so then we look in that three so count three to five bars after the pattern completes and tell me what you see. Two three. The third bar it comes off of the RSI oversold, but only until this bar then it breaks above that zone. But that's all right because look at your indicator progress. Indicator hits the extreme, comes out. Yep. You've got clear stabilization on a four-hour chart. So yep. remember, also, every one of those bars is four hours. Yep. So this thing probably we spent a day and a half yep. wallowing in this zone at 99. But you're down there, and you're thinking to yourself, 99.20 is my number. 99.20, 99.20. So I want to buy this at or just below 99.20. And if I'm 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 got that number in my brain and I'm looking for confirmation off of RSI, okay, that's exactly the situation. That those are eighty percent of all successful harmonic trades. Mm -hmm. That type of reversal right there. Thank you. So that, that's a really good one. I know the shark is, uh, you know, it's kind of a difficult creature, but you know, I've got some free videos. Terry, Terry did a great write up a few weeks ago on on the shark. I thought I it was really book, good. And uh, this weekend, last weekend, yeah. Oh, you did? I didn't. I got. Yeah, send it a copy. Yeah. Just to help these guys. Uh, I mean, those who follow my website, I'll have to understand it better. 
Yeah, no, I think it's, look, it, we're coordinating a couple different elements. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I'm just going to finish up with this, and then i got to get going. Mm -hmm. But um, you're, everybody, you know, your first job is identify the patterns and get to the completion point. And then your second job is look for some confirmation at that completion point. And then the, the third is just understand what the, 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 the general profit targets are of a 382 to a 618. And, and those are the, the three steps. I think, you know, a lot of the work that's out there is basically identification. But now let's get into execution. Terry, you know, I spent a lot of time with Terry um, talking about different ex execution methods. And it's one of my focuses now uh, really to push the methodology so that people really get it. But, um, you know, I mean, that's exactly the kind of situation we want to be looking for. Uh, and, you know, I, I think, Terry, you know, I, I appreciate the time. Yeah. Uh, maybe we get back in here next week and we can continue the discussion. But I, I do appreciate it. I appreciate everybody, uh, you know, doing all the work they are with harmonic patterns. You know, this, this I'm just a real quick one-minute story that, guys, ladies, everybody, look, it, this all started from my love of the markets, and I was just trying to hammer it out, out of my bedroom 20, 25 years ago, looking for what would give me an edge and what are those reliable measures. And all of that, I'm an accountant by trade. I used to do a lot of fundamental analysis that got me to charts. And so whatever you're doing, my just the main message is measure the market to define your opportunities. You find a way to do that you'll be successful. Uh, we do it with harmonics and, um, you know, that's really uh, just the framework that it has served me the best. So, Terry, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, uh, thank you, everybody. And maybe we'll do this next week. All right. So if you guys uh, want to hear Scott talk about patterns next week, please do check back. Yep. So thanks, Scott. Uh, Great. Hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah. Thanks, my friend. You have a great day. Everyone have a great night over there, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. So it's now it's about 10 p.m. Uh, we are finishing up, but uh, right now there should be some Canada news. Let's take a look at how the market moves after the news is out. Okay. So just now we predicted Canada will strengthen, and you can actually see that Canada indeed strengthened. Dollar cat is coming down. Yep. So I really hope that later on it will just keep pushing down, break the B level, pull back, and that's how we can actually short the dollar cat. Yep. So cat switch should be going up. Uh, if you guys came in early, I mean, I, we talked about this before Scott started talking. Yep. Yep. Cat, cat switch is going up. Aussie cat should be coming down also. Yeah, so all these are based on patterns. It could be a simple ABCD pattern. It could be a godly, it could be a bad, you know, but see, everything is aligning nicely. So right now, just now, if you have seen Scott talk about the dollar index, uh, that was a shark pattern. You can actually see uh, almost an, an identical shark pattern, you know, that's going to complete on the Aussie cat. So really uh, stay tuned and really watch this when it comes to 98.50. Dollar Swiss uh, was at 98.50 before it flipped up same exact chart yeah so this level please do watch out it could happen tonight it could done it could be it could happen tomorrow okay power Aussie yeah let's talk about power Aussie <clears throat> okay so power Aussie uh we had that big shark to buy right at 59 30 then uh, we got in, but I did not stay all the way up. You know, if I stay in, it should be easily six, seven, six to seven hundred pips. Right now, power all this interesting. Uh, this is a bearish shark pattern again, and uh, the the zone that we are watching is between 67.37 to 67.60. This is the PRZ zone, and this is the zone that I'll be watching out for potential reversal. If you look at the RSI bear, uh, I mean the RSI indicator, we are not at our extreme yet. Uh, 
normally when the trend ends, there should be a RSI BAM with a sharp retest of the zone. So just be patient. Uh, we could reach there in the next few days. Yep. Uh, if we just do a ABCD move off the low here. Yeah, so everything is pretty perfect. I have an ABCD pattern that's from the low. I have a bearish sharp pattern. So it, should, it could overflow a little bit towards 68, 1.68. Yeah, so this is the, the zone that you should be watching. Yeah. Monitor this zone for potential selling. But right now, you know, don't chase the high. The price is horrible right now. Yeah. So SK, I hope that I address whatever you uh you have or questions you have on the pound Aussie. Okay guys, uh really thank you so much for today. I hope that you enjoyed the session by Scott. Uh I specially invited him in to surprise you guys. Uh you know, every week you have been listening to me talk and Thank hope you. to give a different perspective. Yeah. Uh, wait. Uh, Esther, you want to be a presenter? Do you have questions to ask? Yeah, I'm just opening up the floor to, to you. Esther, do you want to be a presenter? Oh, no. All right, all right. Yeah, so I'm done for today. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that you guys could come back again next week, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next week. I'll be uploading the recording uh, by tomorrow. So if you guys missed some of the portion that we talked about this week, today, you can actually check out the recording. Yep. Okay, last but not least, if you want to get my shark pattern guide, uh, just click on this link here. Uh, it's free of charge. Just download it. All right, goodbye. Have a good night. Yeah. All right, so probably I'll talk more about RSI BAM next week or during the weekend. Jason, uh, I'll give you the link, Haunt. Yeah, you can check it out here. Okay, goodbye guys.